Right. What's up, everybody? Dr. Jeff Moore here, currently serving as CEO of ICE, lead faculty for cervical and lumbar spine divisions. It is great to see everybody here. Um, I am actually, oddly enough, where PT on ICE originally started um, here at Back in Motion Physical Therapy in Upper Michigan. So um, good to be home. We are home for the holidays um, to spend some time with the family here in Upper Michigan. So great to be here. So let's talk about, we're here on Thursday, so it's Gut Check Thursday and Leadership Thursday. Let's chat about those things. So Gut Check Thursday, this is going to be a beast. So we've got seven rounds for time. We've got eight kettlebell swings, 22 push-ups, and then five strict pull-ups followed by a 1,000 meter row. So, I mean, you got to figure, even if you're rowing, what, the better part of four minutes there, um, you've got pretty serious rounds um, to get through seven times. So settle in for a nice long gut check Thursday. That's what we have on tap this week. Team, we have a million things going on at Ice World. So if you haven't checked it out yet, the new website is launched. So ptonice.com, same domain, but go check that thing out. Huge thanks to Ryan and the Think Team um, for the heavy lift of putting together what is a beautiful website. What's so wonderful is that our search features, both for courses, geography, course title, um, all of that is so much more streamlined, as is find a PT. So if you want to find an ice trained fitness forward therapist, now you can search by geography, how many courses they've taken, are they ice certified? So all of those different um, backbones are significantly more developed. So go check out the website. We also launched the dry needling division. So thrilled to have Paul Kaloran um, running the dry needling division. We're going to have courses um, September, uh, very, very end of September, October, November, December, and then we'll probably have a couple every month um, for the next who, who knows how many years going forward. Uh, we, you all been asking for that for years. Um, we were really just waiting for the right person, the right culture, fit, the right philosophy. It, it all came together and we are now ready to full scale launch dry needling. So if you want to jump in, we have an upper, a comprehensive upper body and a comprehensive lower body course. So um, if you want to jump into either of those, you don't have to have needling training to jump in. So we'd love to have you. Paul would love to have you. And we have a whole fleet of TAs who are going to be flanking Paul and launching that division here over the next few months. So I'm um, thrilled about that. And finally, we launched Onward Boise. So a new Onward location is going to be up and running here in a few months. I'm hopping out to Boise um, next week to have a look at properties. So just a whole bunch of stuff going on, um, exciting things um, and, and pump for all of it. But let's chat about Leadership Thursday. I want to ask the question, if you've really recognized your greatness, because I don't think many of us have. I don't care how many times you read Strengths Finder. I don't think we've really embodied in many cases what we are uniquely good at. And, and I'm saying this because of a lot of conversations I've had over the past few months, kind of mentoring some folks and, and talking about next steps. And I find that we ha cannot articulate our strengths very well. And I think a big reason for that is we talk so often about hiring out our weaknesses, and I totally, I could not be more on board with that, right? Like identifying your gaps and figuring out where do you need to hire out to support you and not trying to fill your own gaps that you naturally have, but instead of hiring that, oh, I love that. What I don't think we talk about though is, okay, do that, but then also embody that you do have unique strengths and how are you going to leverage those? In other words, for the sake of whatever you're doing, whatever you're involved in, whatever company, whatever mission... What is it critical for, for the company's sake, that you continue to own, that you don't hire out? Because you are uniquely talented in that space. No matter how big the thing that you're working with gets, what will you keep doing no matter what? Because it is in the best interest of the company that you do so. Do you know what that is? Let's shift today from talking about finding your gaps and supporting those and building a great team. And let's talk for a moment about, but what are you really, really good at that you should never stop doing, no matter how big something scales that you're involved in? So think about this scenario. Think about if I asked you, if I was trying to hire you, you have no idea what I'm hiring you for. And I say, what are you exceptional at? What are you exceptional at? 
Do you have an answer for that? And I'm pausing just to give you a second to think about if, I, if you didn't know what I was hiring you for and I just said, what are you exceptional at? Do you have an answer? What you're generally going to find is that people who don't fully understand their strength, they'll want to know what job they're applying for. They'll say, well, it depends. What, what, what job are you trying to hire me for? It does not depend. Talent is not context specific. You should be able to answer that question directly with absolutely no idea what job the person's trying to hire you for because your talent isn't context specific. I'll share mine with you and then I'll give you some tips that hopefully can help you find yours. So I have a unique knack at identifying culture fits. That's what I do. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're trying to hire me for. I'm telling you right now that I am good at that. Now, I'm not saying that I've got a knack for necessarily identifying greatness because to me, greatness is how you fit into a team. What I'm saying is, at any given moment in an organization, if I understand where we are, if I understand what our mission purpose is, I understand where we're trying to go, my unique talent is knowing who the next person should be. Like that person fits. If we go with them, considering everything else on the table, we are going to be better off. It is going to be more of a direct line to executing the mission vision. So the reason this is so important when I look at all my worlds, I try to bend all of them towards this talent. So at ICE, I am always focused on finding new division leaders and lead faculty. At South College, I'm on the admissions committee. At Onward, I'm in charge of expansion, right? In every area that I'm involved professionally, I'm always trying to bend my role towards leveraging that talent to being able to look at where we are and where we're trying to go, then look at the field of applicants or individuals, right, prospects, and say, I'm telling you right now, it's that person. Considering all these variables, it's that person. In any of these different worlds, in their very, very different demands, but that talent isn't context specific. It's a thing that can be applied to anything. You've got this too. So now I want you to really think about what is yours. I'll give you some examples, because this might help, in addition to mine. Some people are unbelievable at streamlining process. They can find the fastest way from A to Z in the midst of noise. Some people are unbelievably talented at looking at chaos and saying, team, I'm telling you, I know there's a lot going on. The best way to do this is this, to use this system, to use this app, to organize our divisions in this way. There, there, some people are oddly talented in the midst of chaos of seeing that theme. That, that, sh that, that, that crow flies A to Z, the fastest line between two points, they can see it and they can say, we got to shape that and add that because this route is going to be the most efficient. That is a very, very unique talent. It is not job specific. It is a talent that can be applied to any job. Some people are incredible at inspiring people around a vision. They can help people see the forest for the trees which is really important because people tend to get caught up in the how and not quite remember the why. Tends to be a human characteristic, right? When we think about trying to get something done, we see the obstacles. Some people are really good at making people look over the obstacles, right? And see the why. And that tends to energize groups and carry folks forward. Some people are incredible at helping people perceive support. It's a very unique talent. Some people are incredible at making other people feel supported. Just to give you a specific example, and sometimes you listen to these, so that'd be awesome. Julie Whitman is an incredible example of this human. Julie just makes you feel supported. She makes you focus on your resources, not on the demands on those resources, which decreases your stress level. So anybody who knows Julie Whitman and has ever been in crisis and contacted her, she is, has an uncanny ability to help remind you how many things you have in your corner. And ultimately you walk out saying, you know what? I think that I can do this. I wish I was certain I couldn't, but now I'm almost sure that I can. Julie's talent is not job specific. It's not content specific. She could do that anywhere. What is your talent that is like that? Here's some ways to identify it. 
reflect on the companies, on the projects, whatever, the things you've been involved in. Reflect on things that went particularly well and then identify what wouldn't have went well if you weren't there. So there's two parts here. You got to break them up. What went really, really well? When you look back at, at, your, at your last project, at your last company, at your, what grew incredibly well? That Where did you play a role in that? That had you not played that role, it wouldn't have happened. Give that some serious thought. And it's hard because we're reluctant to own it, right? We always want to say things like, well, the whole team contributed. Team, that's wonderful. In, in, in general, I love that kind of servant leadership mindset. But for a moment, I'm asking you to knock that off and say, where were the areas that had you not been there that probably wouldn't have happened? You do at some point have to own that and say, I was, I was critical there. Like I had a really strong role because that's what allows you to begin identifying what are the themes among those victories. Okay, number two, when people are impressed with something you've done and you aren't sure why, pause. This is a very, very important moment. When people are like, man, how did you get that done? And you're like, really? Like that wasn't too bad. Like it, it didn't feel like a heavy lift to you, but other people were shocked you were able to pull it off. That asymmetry is telling you that you were in that flow state, that that space you were doing effortlessly was very, very challenging for other people. This is your space that you want to live in all the time. Again, what makes it tough is because it's easy for you, is sometimes you don't recognize it. Because if someone doesn't say something like that and you don't pause, you're like, well, that wasn't too bad. But for somebody else, it would have been. So have a really keen ear when somebody mentions, boy, I'm, I'm surprised you got that done or relative to how that's happened historically, that sure went easier. And you're like, huh, pause at that moment and reflect. Finally, ask the people you trust and listen to what they tell you, but ask them specifically this question. What kinds of problems when you're having them, do you feel like I am the exact right person to reach out to? Ask them that question, not what am I good at, but what kind of problems do you have where my name reflexively jumps into your cortex, where you're like, oh, I wish I could contact um, Jeff, you, right? Whoever's listening to this show. What, what kind of problems are people having where they instinctively feel like you're the resource they need? Collect that question on five people you trust, and I bet you're going to find a theme where they're helping you to identify the talent that to you seems effortless and to everybody else seems challenging. I bet if you go even further, you're going to find the theme that because you were involved in those companies or projects, things move forward because of the very skill these people identified that you would not have seen if you didn't ask them. Team, you need to be able to figure out your unique talent. Because while we're trying to, it's Leadership Thursday, right? And as we're trying to lead and as we're trying to build, I am all about hiring your gaps. But I'm also about you saying, but in this one space, I should remain in the seat because I do have a unique gift here. You need to know what that is. There's that great saying, right? The greatest warrior fights rarely, but not never. And, and, and I think that's worth kind of meditating on. I'm not asking you in the, in the thing you're growing, the project you're a part of, I'm not asking you to do every part of it. I love the fact you want a higher strength around you. I am though asking you to figure out what is that one part that if it wasn't for you, it wouldn't have a successful launch and then replicate being in that role in every area of your life. Identify your greatness. Give it some thought. PTOnice.com team, that's where everything lives. I would love to chat more about any of this stuff. Check out that new website. Check out the new dry needling division. Um, get hyped for uh, Onward Boise. So much going on. Team, have a great Thursday. Cheers. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.